All right, so the, it, they're giving us two plus tangent squared of x over secant squared of x minus one. And they want us to make it a single trig function to a power. How are we gonna, yeah, this one is super tricky. Basically what's in my mind, if I, as I look at our, let me show you our formula sheets. That's, that's what you wanna be thinking about is your formula sheets right here. Remember the most important formula sheet, the big number one is here. And here's the big number two. That's the one I'm focused on right now, that guy. So you wanna be thinking about those all the time. And so basically what's going through my brain is one plus tangent squared of X is secant squared. That one comes up all the time and it's here in a tricky way. And you might say, yeah, but we have two. Yeah, but what could we do with two? We can rewrite that as one plus one. Do you see this trickery? This one's like, this is pretty tricky. So I rewrite that two as one plus one. Why, why would you rewrite yet? Yeah, Two is one plus one, but what a weird thing to do because then I can grab all of this. And what is this? What is one plus tangent squared? This is secant squared of x, isn't it? So this problem becomes one, this, this one that's on the outside here, plus and then secant squared of x, right? This whole box here comes down over secant squared of x minus one. That's pretty tricky. Do you see that? You see what I did there? I rewrote that two as one plus one, and then I grabbed the second one along with the tangent squared, one plus tangent squared. They together, those two things together become secant squared. And the other one that was in the front is still in the front. Okay, that's weird. Now what? Now you can break this up over a common denominator. In other words, it's one over secant squared plus secant squared over secant squared minus one. Is that a confusing step? That was just common denominator broken up. Right, see how these guys have the same denominator? You can make them one fraction with that denominator or you can make them two separate fractions with that same denominator. That's just common denominator. I just separated them over the same denominator. That's just common denominator. Now, why would I wanna do that? Because one over secant squared, I'm running out of room here. Let me add a little space because now what is secant squared over secant? What's the same thing over itself? One. And now plus one minus one, that's gone. This is just one over secant squared. Now what's that? Remember what secant squared is from the formula? What secant is, I should say? Secant is one over cosine from the formula sheet. So this is one over, and then that secant is one over cosine, secant squared is one over cosine squared. Underneath another one, right? That denominator secant squared becomes a denominator one over cosine squared because that's what secant squared equals according to this formula. So that's what secant equals. Secant is one over cosine, so secant squared is one over cosine squared. And then what can you do with a fraction on the bottom of a fraction? As long as there's no adding or subtracting, just flip it up. So it becomes cosine squared over one on the top. It flips upside down and that's just cosine squared. We don't need any one underneath it anymore. That's our answer. It's just cosine squared of X. Like they said, trig function to a power, cosine squared over one. So that involved some trickery.